Hello everyone, I'm Harry, welcome to my channel, and today we're going to do another How to Sound Like video. So this one has been requested tons, so this is How Soon Is Now by The Smiths. So there's actually a lot of mystery to how Johnny Marr actually recorded the guitar tones on this. So I did some reading beforehand that helped me get a lot closer to the original sound. So I read to get the actual tremolo sound, you use several twin reverbs and then try to sync up the tremolo between them all to the exact same thing. But the really tricky part is that the fact that the tremolo is actually right in time with the 16th notes on the hi-hats. So for me to replicate this more easily and keep it really tight in with the drum hi-hats, I had to find a tremolo pedal that one did the classic Fender tremolo sound and two had the tap tempo function. So for that I decided to use the Traver by Fender. So I recently did a full demo of this looking at it all in depth with an intro song and everything like that. So if you'd like to see that, there'll be a link up in the cards in the description and pinned in the comments. So for the other pieces of gear that I'll be using, because it's Johnny Marr, I wanted to use a Jaguar because he's so well known for using Jaguars now. It did say online that he used an Epiphone Casino for the actual recording, but I think the Jaguar gets us really close as well. And then for like the little lead parts in the chorus and the slide parts, I actually used my 58 Rishi ES-335 with Monty's PAF humbucking pickups. But that's it guitar wise. The amp I was using as usual was my old silver phase twin reverb and that was being recorded by the boss was a tube amp expander. Then we used a couple of different pedals. So when there's overdrive, like on the harmonic parts that you'll hear and the lead parts on the ES-335, I was using the Greer Amps Lightspeed. And then for the actual chorus part, I was using the synth one by Keely Electronics. Now I had the blend all the way off, so we weren't actually hearing any of the fuzzy synth sounds. I was just using it so it would give us a slight attack, like a slow gear thing. So it kind of swells up the volume. You could do this with a volume pedal and have more control, but having it swell up at exactly the same rate every time is really nice and gets us closer to that sound. But let's look at the iconic tremolo part first anyway. So again, I was using this Fender American Original 60s Jaguar. We were in the neck position with the strangle switch off. And then on the trade verb, we were in the Optoid tremolo and like i said because this was tapped in the only controls that we really need to be concerned about are the depth and the level and because it's such a harsh tremolo i just had the depth all the way up and then we had a tiny bit of the 65 spring reverb engaged as well so for the tremolo part i did track the guitar part a few times just because that's what johnny marr did on the recording and then it allowed me to pan them right and left and match the levels that way but they were playing exactly the same things all with exactly the same settings so I pull that tremolo part out of the intro song isolated so you can see and hear exactly what's going on. You'll see the settings of the pedal on screen as well. Okay, so for the next part, it's like the little harmonic parts where it's like... So right now the guitar's in standard tuning, so you'll see on the intro song I played it slightly different. I read that you actually retune the guitar so you could play a lot of the harmonics at the 12th fret. So with a 12th, with a cap on the second, you're actually playing them at the 14th. So the strings that I actually changed, bear in mind that I'm talking with the capo on as well. So I tuned the high E down a whole step so it's back to E, so it's like the capo is off. Then the B string stayed exactly the same, which is C sharp with the capo on. The G also stayed exactly the same, so it's A with the capo on. And then the D was actually tuned up to a G sharp instead of the E that would normally be there with the capo on. And then the A and the low E was just left alone as well. So this just allows us to play most of the things at the 12th fret, apart from the one harmonic that you play on the ninth from the A. But it gets us a lot closer, so I actually double tracked it. I didn't just play the harmonics, I played the harmonics but then I also played the fretted underneath as well. I think just having these parts together doing the same thing got me closest to that original sound. So I'm going to pull both of those parts isolated. The first one will be the harmonics and then the second one will be actually fretting the notes so you can see and hear exactly what's going on. So the only thing I changed pedal wise for that part was I went to the plate reverb setting on the tray verb and then engaged the Greer Amps light speed just to give us a bit of overdrive. The light speed had settings like this. So I pull this part out of the intro song isolated. You'll hear the harmonics first and then the actual fretted notes and you'll see the settings of the tray verb on screen as well. Okay. 
Okay, so the only other remaining parts are the big iconic slide riff. And then the little lead line as well, which is... Which you hear in the chorus right under the singing and the chords. So of course I was using this 1958 reissue ES335 by Gibson with Monty's PAF low output pickups. For the lead line in the chorus, I had the synth one engaged just to give us that slight little volume attack swell type thing. Again, there was no fuzz there. The blend was all the way off. It was just about how the volume swells in. And then I was running into the Greer Amps light speed. Again, with the same settings that I used on the Jaguar, just to give it a bit of overdrive. And then I was using the plate reverb in the tray verb again. So I pulled that part isolated out the intro song so you can see and hear exactly what's going on. And you'll see the settings of the tray verb on screen as well. So the last little part we're going to look at is the iconic slide guitar part. So I had to tune the high E down a whole step so that we can play these two notes together with the slide. Now, it does say online that Johnny Marr ran it through a harmonizer, but you can just do it by having that down. And this allows you to play the normal lead line, the... Uh... And the slide down part because you're not hitting that high E string on the lead line. So to get this, I actually did a little bit of volume automation just to swell in the volume on Logic. So I hit it before and then go in, but you could do this with a volume pedal. The synth one could do it, but I like I would like to have the control more. So if I was playing that live, I would do it with a volume pedal so I can swell in at exactly the right time. Other than that, we was using the grid amp light speed with exactly the same settings for a little bit of overdrive. And then the plate reverb and the tray verb, I fend it again to get that big washy ambient -y reverb sound. So I'll pull that lead line out the intro song isolated so you can see and hear exactly what's going on and you see the settings of the tray verb on screen as well. So there we have it, that was a look at how to get the tones on How Soon Is Now by The Smiths. This is probably one of their most iconic guitar tones ever, with that great unique tremolo sound that is perfectly in time with the drums, and the slide guitar parts with all the reverb, and the little lead line in the chorus as well. I think the tray verb really got as close, I mean it makes sense that it sounds quite close because it is supposed to replicate like classic Fender tremolo and reverb sounds, and having that plate on there really allowed us to get those big ethereal lead line sounds going on as well. Again, you can see my full demo of the tray verb. There'll be a link up in the cards in the description and pinned in the comments. Other than that, the Greer Amps light speed just giving us a bit of overdrive, and then the synth one just to give us a tiny little bit of volume swell on the main lead chorus line. So let me know down in the comments how close you thought I got to the original song and any future had sound like videos you'd like to see me do. There's going to be some affiliate links down in the description to every piece of gear I use. These just help support the channel out further so i'd really appreciate it if you go and check them out if you did like that how to sound like video please leave a like comment and subscribe and hit the little bell notification for me as well it really does help me out a lot and that way you won't miss out on any of my future uploads other than that go onto my channel check out some of my playlists i have plenty more lessons covers gear demos how to sound like videos and anything guitar related as always i've been harry and thanks for watching